Hey guys, I uh, just wanted to do a quick uh, video on uh, some two adventures I've had with this uh, 07 Prius. You know, um, a lot of people do complain about the inverter pump, and um, when I bought this car, um, it one evening as I was out for a drive, the pump just uh, kind of failed on me. I wasn't really sure what it, exactly the problem was because this was my first experience with a Prius. Um, but after two days of troubleshooting and not spending money on with the dealership or replacing 12 volt batteries and doing all those crazy things, um, you know, it turned out that the car was overheating and the reason for the car, the inverter overheating um, was that the pump had failed. So this is the pump that was in the car. I'm not sure exactly who makes this specific pump. I don't know if it's the OEM pump or if, you know, if this is one of those generic uh, pumps off of uh, Amazon or eBay. Not sure. Um, from what I read is that when you look at the original pump, there's usually a hex screw um, on top uh, with a couple other markers and this definitely does not have anything. So I'm thinking that this probably is one of those um, cheaper pumps um, that was installed. So anywho, um, I, you know, again, being new to Priuses, um, I went ahead and ordered one from Walmart uh, because I figure why not? Let's, let's get it. It's um, American brand um, Gates is the manufacturer of this pump. Um, you know, it's quite small in comparison to what came out of it. So, just to give you an overview, this is when I bought the car. This is the size of the pump that was in it, which apparently when I bought the car had already failed. This is the pump that I bought from Walmart. Um, it's a Gates pump, much smaller. Um, and I installed it in, I want to say end of July. Then I did a trip to Virginia, um, hiking for, camping for four days. It was a thousand miles and the car was still running just fine. Um, and once I hit, well, I was just about to hit 4,000 miles last week. And, you know, unlike the first experience when this guy failed, I was driving the ABS VSC, all the lights came on, the AC shut off, the car started, you know, you could tell that something had failed. At least there was some warning signs when this guy failed. Uh, so I kind of knew what to look out for when the pump fails and what are, you know, what are some of the symptoms. Uh, apparently last week when I was driving on the highway, uh, the car just died on me. Uh, no signal, no warning, nothing. The, the power just went off. And at the side of the highway, I was, you know, about 11, 11 o'clock at night, uh, wondering, okay, what the heck just happened here? So, you know, again, you know, thanks to all the wonderful posts of uh, Prius, uh, Prius chat, um, you know, I was able to quickly look and diagnose the problem on the side of the highway in the middle of the night. Uh, it turned out that this pump had shorted, causing the AM2 fuse to blow. So, um, you know, I'll show you where exactly it is. Um, so, when this pump shorted, it blew the AM2 fuse. And it took me a while to, to kind of figure, figure out how to get back home because, I mean, I could have called AAA. We actually did call AAA. I had my friend come by and uh, we called AAA, but you know, it was late at night and they weren't sure as to what the wait time was. So, you know, kind of going doing a quick search on Prius chat um, came across that you know to double check the AM2 fuse if the pump gets shorted um, which I did so I'll show you where exactly it is so you know before I do that so I ordered a Dorman 
brand pump which is supposed to be the OE fix which has you know the OEM fix the original pumps that these Priuses came with apparently the pumps would short or they would you know just fail intermittently uh, that would cause the inverter to overheat and stall your car so supposedly the doorman uh, pump oh so just just so this this pump came in this box that's the gates 41503e do not buy it less than 4,000 miles and it failed uh, so back to you know back to um, the pump the OE pump so a doorman uh, designed their pumps and supposedly they have the OE fix um, with the pump just you know randomly shorting out and, and dying um, so I ordered that at, you know this the gates pump it ran me forty three dollars I think uh, thirty six dollars and the doorman I picked up um, off of Amazon next day delivery I think it was around sixty seven dollars now you know I could have gone the OE route the OE pumps are made by Asin uh, but depending on you know your dealership you may be spending anywhere from hundred sixty dollars to two hundred thirty dollars for that pump now I figure if I'm spending that amount I'll take a risk with the doorman American brand it probably is made in China but it's an American brand they claim that they fix the original pump issue you know the flaw so I you know I went ahead and ordered that so I put that pump in this car uh, about a week well just just about a week ago I got it in mail Friday and I saw uh, in Saturday and I installed it that same day and the car's been running fine I've already put close to um, 500 six almost 600 miles and the car's been running just fine so to show you where exactly the AM2 fuse is um, So that's the new Dorman pump. Now in this car, unfortunately, you know, I left the original mounting plate in there because that bolt's completely rusted. There's a bolt uh, towards the bottom. That's the not not on the mounting plate. So this that that bolt right there. That's where the pump mount gets mounted to. But there's another chewed off head so i didn't want to mess around with the plate so you know i just put a new pump on the existing mounting plate um but yeah it took it took about 35 minutes 35 minutes um you know to install it the second time around the first time i had to figure out how to get in there without removing really you know i've seen videos of removing headlights and bumper and this and that i didn't want to go that route um what i just simply did was that i took I took the plastic cover off once i took that cover off there's there's a two bolts one here and one here for the inverter you go ahead and take those off and you take a two by four you put that in and bring it up high um you know if you're doing it yourself you put a piece of you know a couple pieces of two by four small pieces there um to raise the inverter up and then you can use a long extension and get in and remove the bolts off the uh, pump get the pump up get the pump off and then get some clamps and pinch the hose um, so that way you don't um, have uh, you don't lose too much of uh, coolant um, but anywho so it took about 35 minutes to kind of just get that replaced so right now I'm running a doorman pump we'll see how long it lasts I've seen some bad reviews you know long post thought of uh, purchase and installation uh, but you know we'll keep my fingers crossed and see how this goes i mean the for 2007 with 182,000 miles the car the car's engine and transmissions are you know pretty solid um you know i like i don't hear any uh, any other engine sounds or things like that um you know i have put in new spark plugs new iridium spark plugs um you know to the car um uh, the next thing I have to do is uh, clean the um, mass airflow sensor and the throttle body. I gotta clean that as the next step. But you know, just basic maintenance with the uh, air filter, etc. But you know, the car seems to be running pretty strong. Uh, I don't really see any major issues. The suspension's fine. I'll probably need to get some new tires um, as as 
winter arrives here in New York. Uh, but you know, I do use synthetic um, oil uh, and do the oil changes um, about, um, you know, it's 10,000 mile oil rated, 10,000 miles. I generally try to do it a little bit before I hit 10,000 or, and obviously keep a track of the oil level. Um, you know, I want to make sure that I'm not burning any kind of oil given it's, it's a high mile, a high mileage um, on the engine. But, you know, like a traditional car, um, because of the inverter, you know, the car spends time between the two, between the electric motor and the gas engine. So, you know, the gas engine doesn't necessarily have the total life of it, um, of the 185,000 miles. Um, the other thing, you know, I kind of wanted to point out, um, was that when I got the car, one, um, after a long rain, a long night rain, uh, while I was camping out in Virginia, um, I came I drove back to New York and I felt a you know a little bit of hesitation I didn't quite catch it right away but once I was back home um, two days later as I was driving uh, the car just threw out error codes for uh, cylinder four misfire and that kind of and again I was on the highway and the car just wouldn't go you know it, it wouldn't speed up beyond you know 20 miles an hour uh, and it would just struggle like it would kind of jerk constantly um, as it, it, as it as you try to give gas so in troubleshooting that um, what I noticed so when I took when I took the coil off I saw a little bit of uh, rust and there was some water building up inside the fourth cylinder took the plug out cleaned everything out dried everything off put the plug back in this is before I changed the spark plugs um, and ran the car for a couple days and it was running fine so when I saw that you know what the water had gotten in there I decided to put four brand new plugs anyways so I changed that out and so far the car has been running fine and I was thinking how can the water get in there because it wasn't um, a head gasket leak or anything but um, after doing a little bit of um, troubleshooting just investigation it turns out that when the water um, you know when with the rain what was happening is that water was coming in and there's a crack here that goes underneath and the water basically eventually I don't know from somewhere here it was dripping right above the fourth cylinder right here so right above the fourth coil and then it would sip in through the seal over there so apparently it's not properly sealed but the water was coming in so I just siliconed the top and as an extra precaution just put some tape over where the two little openings are so that way it, it stops the water from seeping in um, but you know something simple fix um, you can probably you know I think if I had gone to the dealer they probably would have charged me for a blown head gasket and we would have just done this simple silicone fix um, and would have you know kind of probably would have spent somewhere around a thousand dollars to fix all this stuff but nothing really major um, but I kind of wanted to just bring up the whole topic about the pump because I'm on my second pump now. Um, again, the first one was Gates. The, the second one now that I ordered is a doorman. I'm not sure when I bought the car, that pump, I don't know what brand it is. There's no label or anything like that. There's no marking. So I'm, I'm thinking that it's probably some knockoff cheap made uh, pump. Um, the doorman pump, uh, I have to say it does... Um, work really nice um, and I'll show you guys that when you have the car turned on um, it has a nice verb to it like this, this good amount of turbulence um, you know you could you could see it already like you don't even need to open the cap but you can see the turbulence just like when you hit the, the power button twice without even turning the engine on uh, but let's open the radiator uh, the reservoir cap and take a look and you can see that that is really well turbulence in there that water is bubbling um, you know, it's not hot but it's just turbulence that it's the pump is working because when the pump really failed um, what hen ended up doing at what I ended up doing at night was going back to the fuse and the pump shorted um, and I was this fuse the AM2 AM2 fuse right here 15 amp um, so that shorted when I 
put my hand on the pump, you know, the the old Gates pump, I felt power. Like you know, when you when you put your fingers on the top hose, you can feel that there's circulation. So I felt the circulation, but apparently there was no turbulence. And I don't know exactly what caused that pump to just short out, causing that fuse to blow, but that killed the power completely. So what I ended up doing was I had a spare 15 amp um, and I took the 15 amp, I put that in and that fuse, fuse link blew right away. So then I did a, I took another, you know, I took a 15 amp here, which is for the dome lights wasn't really a big concern at the time and in a case of emergency when I put that in that blew right away as well so I knew that there was a short causing that to um, just create a bigger issue so temporarily I took a 30 amp put the 30 amp in there and that I was able to start the car and at least come back home luckily I had my friend with me so I just asked him to just follow me until I got home just in case I you know there was a bigger issue um, and the car stopped again um, but you know put a 30 amp in there and I was able to start the car come back home so now that I'm out of my spares um, obviously I think that's important that any 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 uh, car electronic issue especially with fuses you kind of want to make sure and you always keep spares so what I did was I went and ordered um, some spare fuses here are the two blown 15s that I took out and you could see see if I can uh, focus in on that that a little bit better but you can see that fuse links are that's that's broken um, but what I did was I ordered some spares spare um, fuses two of each so just in case you know in the middle of the night I'm driving around because I do drive at night um, doing some medical delivery work um, so God knows you know you you kind of want to be prepared um, in that situation but the car has been running fine um, no issues I have another camping trip out to uh, Virginia again next week that's going to be another thousand miles that I'll put on and uh, we'll see how that goes. But hopefully, you know, this kind of, you know, helps whoever else in similar situation and not to panic. Just, you know, logical thinking, staying calm, logical thinking goes a long way in solving, um, figuring out the, the root cause and, and coming up with a solution to get, get you back uh, moving on the road. Uh, so it's again, uh, hopefully this helps. Uh, fellow Prius Prius owners um, and uh, enjoy your rides this is a great car it just needs to be a little bit uh, attentive to its uh, issues thank you